Hello, Bethel Community Church. This is Pastor Rich with the Wednesday devotion that we're looking at this week. And this devotion uh, is really geared to people who felt maybe that they're not really forgiven by God, or they've had a hard time understanding how God could forgive them for everything that they have done. And people have sometimes even asked me, Pastor, can I be forgiven? You don't know what I have done. Um, have I gone too far? Could God truly, really forgive me? And basically what they're asking, does the cross really cover what I have done? And I wanna address this today by looking at the story of the most wicked king in Judah's history. In 2 Chronicles chapter 33, verse one to nine, it says Manasseh was 12 years old when he became king, that's pretty young. And he reigned in Jerusalem 55 years, that is a long reign. He did evil in the eyes of the Lord, following the detestable practices of the nations the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. He rebuilt the high places his father Hezekiah, who was a great king, had demolished. He also erected altars to the Baals and made Asherah poles. He bowed down to all the starry hosts and worshiped them. He built altars in the temple of the Lord, of which the Lord had said, my name will remain in Jerusalem forever. In both courts of the temple of the Lord, he built altars to all the starry hosts. He sacrificed his children, plural, in the fire in the valley of ben Hinnom, practiced divination and witchcraft, sought omens, and consulted mediums and spiritists. He did much evil in the eyes of the Lord, arousing his anger. He took the image he had made, which commanded not to make any images, especially of a foreign god, and put it in God's temple, of which God had said to David and to his son Solomon, in this temple and in Jerusalem, which I have chosen out of all the tribes of Israel, I will put my name forever. I will not again make the feet of the Israelites leave the land I assigned to your ancestors. If only they would careful to do everything I have commanded them concerning all the laws, decrees, and regulations given through Moses. But Manasseh led Judah and the people of Jerusalem astray. So he has that on his record too. It's not just that he did this, he led people into air, so that they did more evil than the nations the Lord had destroyed before the Israelites. In Manasseh's 55 year reign, he made images of other gods breaking first and second commandments in the 10 commandments. He put altars to foreign gods in the temple of the Lord. It's like he removed the Lord and put in false gods in, in, in place where the Lord was to be worshiped. He practiced every form of idolatry imaginable, and it appears the only God he would not worship was Yahweh. He sacrificed his children, plural, in the fire, and Baal worship. Now the altar of Baal was in the, bowl, the image of a bull with the head and shoulders of a man, and its arms extended outward. And, and what would happen is they'd put this innocent child in, in, the, in, in the arms of this Baal monument, uh, I, idol, and there would be fire in, in the chest, and the chest cavity would open, and the baby would roll alive into the fire and be burned alive. He did that as, as, in worship of another god. Of course, Yahweh would, not, would be horrified that it was taking place at all. He did this in worship of another god more than once. We don't know how often. It just says his children, plural, at least twice, he did that. We know from chapter 34 that they found the book of law, probably the book of Deuteronomy, while righteous King Josiah was cleaning out the temple of the Lord. Due to Manasseh's reign, an entire generation was raised who did not know the book of the law. They're like, we found this book. Uh, <laughs> he didn't use anything to worship Yahweh. He led the people into grievous sin and idolatry. It was so bad that even though righteous King Josiah did massive reforms, the damage done under Manasseh was so great, the nation could not recover. In 2 Kings 23, verse 24 to 27, it says, Furthermore, Josiah got rid of the mediums and spiritists, the household gods, the idols, and all other detestable things seen in Judah and Jerusalem. This he did to fulfill the requirements of the law written in the book, of, in the book that Hilkiah the priest had discovered in the temple of the Lord. Neither before nor after Josiah was there a king like him who turned to the Lord as he did, with all his heart, with all his soul, and with all his strength, in accordance with the law of Moses. Nevertheless, 
the Lord did not turn away from the heat of his fierce anger, which burned against Judah because, because of all that Manasseh had done to rouse his anger. So the Lord said, I will remove Judah also from my presence as I removed Israel, and I will reject Jerusalem, the city I chose, and this temple about which I said, my name shall be there. Manasseh did every form of idolatry. He completely forsook Yahweh during his 55 year reign, intentionally leading people astray, desecrating the temple of the Lord in a most grievous manner, and even killed, murdered his own children in a satanic ritual. Could a scoundrel like Manasseh be forgiven? Well, the book of 2 Kings does not give this account, but 2 Chronicles tells us something really kind of astounding about God. In 2 Chronicles 33, verse 10 to 13, it says, The Lord spoke to Manasseh and his people, but they paid no attention. So the Lord brought against them the army commanders of the king of Assyria, who took Manasseh prisoner, put a hook in his nose, bound him with iron sh uh, bronze shackles, and took him to Babylon. In his distress, Manasseh sought the favor of the Lord, his God, and humbled himself greatly before the God of his ancestors. And when he prayed to him, the Lord was moved by his entreaty and listened to his plea. So he brought him back to Jerusalem and to his kingdom. Then Manasseh knew the Lord is God. And then in verse 15 to 16, it says, He got rid of the foreign gods and removed the image from the temple of the Lord, as well as all the, all the altars he had built on the temple hill and in, in Jerusalem, and he threw them out of the city. Then he restored the altar of the Lord and sacrificed fellowship offerings and thank offerings on it and told Judah to serve the Lord, the God of Israel. Did Manasseh go too far to be forgiven? No. Now understand, he was guilty of leading people astray. He was, he was guilty of idolatry in the most extreme forms. He was guilty of extreme brutality, sacrificing children in a satanic ritual. I'm not sure you can go more evil than that. It would be hard to do. Yet, I would not be surprised to see him in heaven. I expect to. Now notice there were still consequences. He killed his children. He has to live with that. He hurt many people. He left a terrible legacy, and he is the final straw in Judah before they're, so that they're going to be taken into captivity. But he is forgiven. No matter what you did, you can be forgiven. The answer is to repent like Manasseh did, and to trust God, and to believe him. The cross is sufficient for any sin you have committed. It is the perfect, complete, final sacrifice of a God who loves you. So if there's that thing, and we all have it, I've been a pastor for many years, I have this. Everyone I know that has been honest with me, I've come across, has that thing at one, two, three in the morning, they wake up and they remember, and they have a hard time going back to sleep. It's something they did, it's something they said. Maybe it was something that was done to them, and they, they own that, and they think, can God really forgive me? Look at the depths of my sin cross says yes. The cross says absolutely. Keep that in mind and realize that the cross is for you. Your sin is forgiven. And let it be impetus to live a holy life for him. To live for him and to proclaim him and to love him and to worship him. Because you are forgiven. Father, I, I do pray that just in some way this is an encouragement to someone out there, maybe who's struggling with this, who, who does wake up at one or two in the morning and the enemy continues to bring that thing to them, that thing that he wants to accuse them of. We know from Revelation 12, the enemy accuses brothers and sisters before you day and night. But as we hear him pronouncing guilt, I pray for my brothers and sisters, they'd hear the cross screaming, innocent, paid in full, forgiven and that they would accept this, they receive it, apply it to their heart and mind, and live accordingly, and live in freedom. And this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining the devotion today. God bless.